All right, the first thing we're going to code in this puzzle game is the make tiles function, and we're passing in things. Now, things is a table, and it's a shuffled table. It's those hidden objects, and it's already been shuffled, and we're passing it in here. So the first thing we're going to do is create an index. This is what is used to keep track of where we are in that table, and we're going to initialize it to 1. And now we're going to be doing a loop, and we're going to be doing for x equals 1, tiles across, and this is one of those variables that was up at the top of the program, top of the code, and tiles across in this case equals 4, although if we wanted to make a 5 by 5 grid, we could go change those numbers and then do that. Do. Now, here's something that I'm not sure that we've covered yet. We're actually going to do another loop. We're doing a loop inside of a loop, and this one is going to equal tiles down. Go ahead and close these off here, and then we'll look at what's going on. So we start by doing the tiles across, but then we jump into doing the tiles down. So what we're going to end up doing on the left-hand side, we're going to do the tile up at the top, and then one down, and then another down, and then another down, and then that means this for loop will be finished, and it'll jump back, and it'll do the second round of the outside loop, which will basically give us the second column. And then it'll jump back and do the third column and fourth column. So we're actually going to be putting these in a column at a time from top down. So we need an object. And right now we're going to do just the hidden things. We're not going to do the tiles for a few minutes at least. So we'll just call a thing. Local thing equals display dot new image. And it's inside of images. And it's going to be thing. Remember we passed in that table of things. So it's going to be things and then the index, so whatever is at the first element of that things table. Remember we initialized index to one right here, so this is the first element, whatever's in the first position, that's going to be here. And we'll go ahead and finish it out because it's a .ping file. So now we have that and we have to position it on the screen. So thing.x equals, and here's something that is a little bit weird. But what it does is it just makes sure that everything's sitting in the right spot. So we go tile width plus tile spacing, because I have them separated by a two pixel gap, and then plus left spacing. So how far from the left side do we want the grid to start? And Y is going to be pretty much the same thing. So we'll just copy and paste, change this to Y. And this is going to be tile height. Spacing's the same, and you go to top spacing. Now we're going to give this thing a name so that we can recognize it later. So thing.name equals, and we're just going to give it whatever the actual file name is minus the dot ping and stuff. So we'll do things index. Now we're going to do some more stuff in here, but let's go ahead and just do index equals index plus one. So we increment our index so the next time through we can grab the next image. And let's just go ahead and try this and see if it puts a grid of 4x4 four four objects up on that screen. Okay, we got one and tile spacing. All right, well, let's give it a shot. That looks pretty good. Okay, so there are all of the hidden objects. And if we run this again, they are in different locations each time. So that's cool. So we can see that our shuffle routine is working. We can see that our grid routine is working. The other thing we need to do here is put the things inside the all things table. Remember I said we're going to save all of these objects that we create in a table, and then later we can ditch them when we need to. But it's just so that we can have one place where we can grab any of these objects that we need to. So that table is called all things. So all things, and we'll fill that in, in a second, equals the thing that we just created. Now, where are we going to put it? Well, the first time through, we're going to put it at the number of elements in all things plus one. So the first time through, the number of elements is going to be zero plus one. So all things one is going to equal the first thing that we created. So that is completely done now. And now we have to do the tiles. And I just want to try this one more time just to make sure that I didn't put a typo in there. Good. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to copy this and change this to tile. And this we already have referenced up above as tile image. The X and the Y is going to be the exact same thing because we want the tile to be smack dab over the top of the hidden object. 
and this is going to be not all things, but all tiles. And let's check this out. And we should see tiles with nothing. Okay, perfect. And we can't touch them yet. So this is going to need an event listener. So add event listener, and we're just going to go with tap. And when that happens, we'll go to a routine called tile tapped. The other thing we need to do here is instead of name, we're actually going to be saving the index because it doesn't have a name, it's just a tile. And so by saving this, the first tile has a number of one, the second tile has a number of two, and so on. So just by clicking a tile, we'll know which number it is in the list. And that's something that's going to be really necessary later on. Okay, so let's go ahead and do tile tapped right now. And the first thing we're going to do is check to see whether at least two objects have been shown. And if two objects are shown, then we don't care about a tap on another tile. If you tap one and you flip it over and you tap another and you flip it over, you shouldn't be able to tap a third one until those first two have either resolved as a match or they've closed back up as a non-match. So we have a variable called numobs showing, and we're going to do this. If it's less than two, then we'll go ahead and do this stuff in here. So let's grab the local tile, and that's going to be the one that we tapped on. So it's event.target. And now we have a table that was defined up above, and it's called flipped. And we flip a tile, we put it into that table. So if flipped num obs showing, which is going to be either a one or a two, does not equal tile.index, then do something else. Okay, this is basically making sure that you can't click on the same tile twice. So if you're really fast, you go click, click, and it'll think that you had two tiles flipped over, but it's still the same one. So we're just making sure that you can't click on the same tile. Okay, so let's say you've gotten down to this point. Now we actually go ahead and say numobs showing equals numobs showing plus one. We save that one. Well, we say the index so we know which tile number it is. And then we go ahead and flip the tile over. And to do that, we use our old friend, transition to. And the time is going to be half a second. And you can play around with that if that seems a little too long or too short for you. And we're setting the alpha to zero. And then on complete, we're going to do check for match. Because the only time that check for match will actually do anything is when there are two things showing, and we'll get to that in just a moment. So at this point, this should work. We should be able to run this, start it, click a tile, and it does a transition to. Now when I say it flips, it just kind of fades out of view. And then click a second one. And now we don't do the check match yet. We haven't written that yet. So nothing is going to happen. These aren't going to close back up, but let's just try clicking a third. And we can't click a third, and that's because numob showing isn't less than two. Number of objects showing is two at this point. So let's go ahead and quit there, and in the next video, we're going to create the check for match so that we can find out if we click on two objects, did we get a match or do we have to keep trying?